Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Today is Saturday, September 12th. Happy Saturday to you. And definitely God bless to every single one of you today. Hope you have a blessed day today. Hope everything goes right and no problems today. Uh, this is your 8 o'clock update uh, with uh, National Hurricane Center. Uh, Tropical Depression 19 is at 35 miles per hour. It is 1,004 millibars. Uh, it is... Uh, Predicted to be a tropical storm as soon as it gets uh, right over uh, Florida. Uh, disturbance 2 over in the uh, East Atlantic is still at 90%. I guess they're waiting for a center of circulation to call it uh, any name. Uh, disturbance 3 is at 60%. Uh, Renee is at 40 miles an hour, 1,004 millibars. And Paulette is actually up to 70 miles an hour, 987 millibars. The millibars drop considerably. So that's that's. That's pretty something. Renee is, I mean, Paulette is really going to be something out there. Now, this is for your Tropical Depression 19. That's what this whole video is going to be about. It's not going to cover anything else. Uh, the other storms I will cover cover later. Uh, now, this is your greatest flood risk over Tropical Depression 19, which is going to be Tropical Storm, either Sally or Teddy. Depends which one makes it first. Now, through Sunday morning, you have Florida here. This is your 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 flash flooding risk. Okay, you have your slight and your moderate, and your, there's no enhanced. I don't see any enhanced, so that's good. Uh, for through Monday, day two, it's no more for the south of Florida by Miami. It's more towards the panhandle of Florida. And by Tuesday morning, day three, this is where your flash flooding is. Now, the 5% is marginal, the 10% is slight. And like I said, there is no moderate or high risk, so that's the good news. Now, here's the, the amount of r rainfall, the total precipitation expected to fall throughout the whole path of Tropical Depression 19. Uh, the light green you're looking at is one inch. The dark green is two to four inches of rainfall. Uh, right here, slight on the edge of uh, Louisiana, you do see that there is a four to six inch uh, area, but that, that's very slight, and there's not a lot of people living over there. When I used to live in New Orleans, as a matter of fact, we used to go shrimping uh, down in that area, so... Now, here's your forecast intensity and track of Tropical Depression 19. It's going to be a tropical storm. That's a definite thing. Uh, but it is predicted that it's going to turn abruptly towards Louisiana. But they don't know exactly where in this cone is it going to turn. They don't know if it's going to turn immediately or if it's going to drag on or if it's going to turn sharp. That's why it's this big area of maybe up here. Now, if you go to cyclocane.com, I love this place. It tells you all the intensities that you need, as well as the spaghetti model possibilities of this storm. Now, as it gets off into the past Florida, it's predicted to be to 40 miles an hour. That's from the National Hurricane Center source. And that is Tropical Storm, guys. And it's predicted to be 45. Then by Monday at 1 p.m. on September 14th, it's going to get up to 60. And then it gets up to 70 by 1 p.m. On, on Monday the 14th. Expected to stay 70 when it gets to uh, Tuesday the 15th. So it's going to be 70 miles an hour by National Hurricane Center from Monday 1 p.m. on the 14th to Tuesday uh, the 15th to 1 a.m. And then after that, it's predicted to go down. It's going to go down to 65 by Wednesday to 16th, which is really good news. And then as it gets in towards land, 30 miles an hour, Tropical Depression 19 will be weakened. So that's a good news on that. I mean, I really don't want this thing to come any further than it is anyway. But that is the projected path with the spaghetti models. And that's why you have such a big circle, because some of these models show in a sharp turn uh, as it gets close to it. Only one shows... Uh, going towards the left. So Lake Charles, I would not worry. I do not see y'all in this area of risk. So God bless y'all over there. I know y'all still dealing uh, with power problems. As a matter of fact, if you go to poweroutage.us, you can see the local uh, power outages that there is. And they're still working on a lot of people in Louisiana. And you can, if you go here, it's an update every 10 minutes. I'll tell you what electric company is working on your problem. And when it's going to be back on possibly would help you. But we're talking almost 90,000 people still in Louisiana without power. Not to mention all the fire problems with Oregon, California, and the problems they have over in the West. Now this is a future radar. I'll play this for you so you can see what they have from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, this is their website from myfutureradar.com. 
and it shows exactly the path of where this is projected to go. And you can see it does get a good center of eye formation. That's why it goes up to 70 miles an hour for those two days. Uh, but the Tropical Depression 19 is predicted to be 30 knot winds. And it's going to get up to 40 knot winds, be a tropical storm by Sunday, September 13th, sometime around 1 p.m. That's going to get up to 50, 60, and now they're predicting it to go back down to 60 and 55. So it's really a hit and miss on whether the 60 or 70 miles an hour winds will stick around. Now, just by the radars of which model showed the worst case scenario, just so you know, uh, HWFI showed 73 knots, HMNI showed 76 knots, and both of those would be terrible. Uh, now, this is the one of those spaghetti models of intensity that it shows of the track of the possibilities, but none of them show a western push. They all show that they're either going to go in this general area or they're going to curve early. Now, if you look on the right, you'll see the HMNI, HMNI is over here on the right. It had the most intensity, and the track of that one is this orange right here where it turns, loops around towards, like, around Tallahassee. But if it follows that track, then that's the intensity that's project, projected to get. But if it keeps going straight, then that's not even a possibility, guys. So I wouldn't worry about it for those out there wondering if it's going to be a hurricane. Because if you look, the most intensities, the average uh, is 53 to 55 miles an hour. But some of them do, do show that it can get up uh, to, to the 70 miles an hour or a little bit higher. See, well, this one has a little bit higher. This one has higher. This one's right on 70. But the average of them is right around 60 miles an hour for a max, maybe 65 at the most now um, this is the way we have now for the storm these are the tropical storm watches that are out they also have a hurricane local statement here that lets them know that uh, south southwest uh let me show this for you so you can see it better southwest uh georgia as well as well as uh alabama and mississippi you're not gonna be getting other problems it says it not very little if any impact at all up, up here so but this is what we have for the 60 hour loop uh, so you can see that uh, it's still tropical storm watch remains in effect for coastal waters from Inglewood to Tarpon Springs Florida uh, out 20, uh, 20 nautical miles uh, waters from Tarpon Springs to Suwannee R River Florida is out 20 to 60 nautical miles uh, and waters from Inglewood to Tarpon Springs Florida is out 20 to 60 nautical miles Coastal waters from Bonita Beach to Inglewood, Florida is out 20 nautical miles, and waters from Bonita Beach to Inglewood, Florida is out 20 to 60 nautical miles. Uh, tropical storm force winds are possible through early Sunday morning. Uh, very strong winds will cause hazardous seas, which could capsize damaged vessels and reduce visibility. Uh, but they are expected 20 to 30 knots with wind gusts to tropical storm force, and the waves could get up to 6 to 12 feet. So please be careful if you have some reason you need to go out there in a boat and you need to do anything. But here's the path that I'm showing right now. Uh, this is a 60-hour runover. That way you can see what's going on. And as it goes through, this is at uh, 8 o'clock right now. And it's about to loop around and get a couple whops on uh, on Florida. One goes towards New Orleans, get some, some rain for y'all. That's at 7 p.m. tonight. At 8 p.m., 9 11 p.m. it starts twirling around now once we get into two o'clock in the morning you're gonna be a lot of heavy rainfall coming across florida as it passes by tampa and then come tomorrow morning uh let's see let's get right at noon here's noon time and it's going right across it should be less worry over in tampa or any of the florida area now it's gonna be more of the panhandle of an issue now at 10 o'clock tomorrow this is where it's going to be turning and it's going to head towards either louisiana or, or nearby, we don't know exactly the landfall yet and which track it's going to take. I'm about to cut out of the 60-hour loop. There it goes. So as far as we can see, it's 1 p.m. on the 14th, guys. And this is has good formation. It looks good. But they're saying there's not going to be a hurricane issue, so I wouldn't worry about it. I mean, National Hurricane Center do know what they're talking about. They are very smart people, and they've been doing this a very long time. Uh, the main thing to worry about is this is still going to be a north to northeast loaded storm. So a lot of storms is going to be on the north and northeast from these bands that's going to, walk, going to hit it and whop it. It looks like Tallahassee 
uh, Tampa, you're still going to get some rain bands that might hit you after it done already passed because it's going to stretch all the way out. Pensacola is going to get a lot of rainfall, and as it goes towards New Orleans, we'll see what happens after that. It's still kind of early. Yay, I love how this thing updates. I love the software. God bless you all today, guys. I hope you all have a, a blessed day today. It is Saturday, and if you're in Florida, I hope that your power and everything stays on and you don't have any problems. That's the last thing y'all need going with all this rain that y'all have and all these uh, cyclones passing by closely. It's kind of a scary thing, I'm sure. Now, today is day one. For anybody that don't know, I'm reading the Bible from day one, one section at a time every morning, only in the mornings. And I'm going to read a section today because it's day one. And it's from the King James Version Bible, so you never have to ask, again, what version is going to be. It's always going to be King James. And this is the best part of the Bible, if you ask me, besides them talking about how beautiful Jesus and everything is. This is God getting started. This is exciting. The first book of Moses, called Genesis. In the beginning... God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Amen. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And then the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he sees. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was, was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days in years let them be for I'm sorry and God made two great lights oh no no yeah, I, I thought I, I thought I was reading it twice but he says it twice See, this is my first time on the on the King James I read uh, a few versions front and back but this is I like this this is very nice seems more real and let them let there be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give a light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that hath life, the fowl that, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and, having, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, 
and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have let, let them have dom, dominion over the flesh of the sea, over the fish of the sea, sorry, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepy thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, and the which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given away green herb for meat. And it was so. And God saw everything he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Amen. God bless you again today, guys. I hope y'all have a great day today. I appreciate y'all for listening to the word of God. Please, if you don't want to open your Bible, at least go somewhere private and thank God just for being alive. Amen. So you have a great day today. I appreciate y'all watching, guys. I'll talk to you later. All glory goes to God.